Good Sunday morning and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at Commandos from Northern Realms and I've seen a couple versions going around with Siege. You guys have voiced that you don't feel like seeing any more Siege for a little bit and that's fine. I wanted to try and make a fully flushed out version of Commandos for 10.2 and this is what I came up with. So it's a little bit greedy because I feel like you have to be in order to make it work. It's going to work very well in certain matchups. It's not going to do very well in other matchups. It'll work very well in matchups that take a little bit of setup from the opponent. It's going to work very well when we're on red coin. It's going to work very well if we're playing into boosty decks, for example, things that don't really interact with our side of the board. But it's not going to work very well into matchups where they have the ability to mess around with our board state and have a lot of control. And what I mean by that is we have a lot of cards that we're depending on quite heavily. So the Defender being one of them, right? This card is definitely something that's going to help keep things together. If they go Purify this, they have access to getting to our good cards in behind it. If they can answer the King Full Test, we have a disadvantage because we're not able to make as many copies of the Commandos. If we run out of leader charges because we have to use zeal to get things working because we know they have a lot of control in round one, we may mess up bringing out the commandos later for the second time around. So there's definitely a few things. I don't really think that our draws are all that bad. So we are pulling, I would say, the majority of the cards that we need in order to make it work. Like I said, it just comes down to the opponent using a lot of control or not using a lot of control. However, this plays super fast especially with the new thinning options. Obviously, Hensel being one of the newer additions and going into the Siege Masters, getting a complete rework, it becomes more of a powerhouse in this way, and I had fun playing it. And normally, I don't have a lot of fun playing decks that have no control or very little control, but I enjoyed this, like, quite honestly. And uh, I do recommend trying it if you're just looking for something refreshing to have fun with. I don't think that it's going to be able to compete at a high level in pro. However, we did win games in pro. So based on that, I do believe that this deck could get you to pro. You see what I'm talking about? So that's basically it. You know, I, I don't need to have a, a bit of a banter of whether it's good or if it's bad. It's, it's fun. We'll leave it at that. And we'll get into the card list here. Amphibious Assault is an echo card. We can play Northern Realms unit from our deck with provision cost of 9 or less and boost it by 1 for each provision below the limit. So, more times than not, we're going to be looking for something like the Carrick Marine for points, or we're going to be looking for the Blue Stripes Commando when we look to bring them all back out, right? After we've put them all back in deck with Pavetta, after we've made all our copies in round 1 and have played that, we want to find a way to actually bring them back and play them again. So, it's going to be commando if we have a commando or a way to access a commando in hand we opt to go for maybe some points here or if we need to go make a copy of commandos we want to keep going with that whole play we can go for a blue stripe scout or if we want to separate the robes a little bit and make sure we don't clog so we can bring up more commandos that we've already created we can go for a siege ladder and this plays quite well with the deck as well so again very versatile with the amphibious and it brings up the base power quite a bit because most of the cards we're going to be looking for here are going to be either four or five provisions now what's nice about this card is that it can also fetch maybe pavetta let's say we missed this it's a key component of the deck because it's like basically 40 per percent of the points of the deck right is being able to bring back the cards or whatever the case maybe 50 percent who knows but um if we can't renew them we're in trouble so having access to pavetta with amphibious assault is really big and us thinning down the deck a bit better than the previous versions of this deck allow us to maybe organically pull pavetta which is ideal so we don't have to waste amphibious on pulling her because she doesn't really get a big boost in that case right so that's basically it King Heads Out helps keep things going, and it really helps us get that deck thinned out. So, play a crew unit from your deck whenever an adjacent unit's cooldown decreases, boost self by the same amount. So, we're not really playing a lot around the cooldown archetype. I only have one card here that really benefits um, the Heads Out. However, it's important that we be able to get the Rafford's Vengeance out quickly in order to really thin our deck out because this will help us play more of the scouts and all that type of stuff early on to help get copies made fast. And that's the big thing is getting the tempo there. So Henselt into Rafford's makes a lot of sense. We can even Henselt into a Siege Ladder later 
if we need to fix the row so we can bring out more commandos. The goal is to fill both rows of these things, right? And then just go for our big payoff with the Voimir boosting them all by one, giving them armor. So we want to be able to separate these rows if possible. That's basically it. This also helps us get crew, maybe if we need crew for something like the Siege Tower to work, right? Because it has that, uh, that crew ability of boost self instead of vitality, so it speeds this card up a little bit more. So I do like Hensel here based on the experience with it so far. I have no problems with that. Uh, ideally, play it earlier than later. I don't think it really helps us out in round three as much because it takes up board space. We kind of want to play this combo early. That's basically it. Now, Roach Merciless is a very good card for this deck because it really helps kickstart the archetype, right? Deploy, damage an enemy unit by two, death blow, gain zeal, order, spawn blue stripes commando, and summon it to the row. So, a lot of previous versions might have had cards in the deck in the bronze end to help damage something down, and then we can basically do a death blow. There's going to be a lot of tokens in play, and I think that we'll be able to naturally find something to target on the opponent's side of the playing field. And if we don't, we can maybe create something with a ping from the Raffords, a boiling oil, or we can just say, you know what, forget about it, let's just take a leader and get it over with. But, um... Really, it, it's it's just a card that you want to have, regardless of having stuff like Marauders and, and whatnot in the Bronze End. Like, a lot of previous versions would have something like that, or they'd have a Ballista. Like, these are definitely considerations, but I don't think they're requirements, so I didn't go and take them there. Maybe if you feel more comfortable playing that way, you can put in something like the Ballistas and take out the Siege Towers. But I think, ultimately, this plays for more points, and that's kind of important, so... I would just keep it the way it is. Full test is huge because the first time you play a bronze unit, uh, sorry, the first time a bronze unit on your side of the battlefield is boosted each turn, spawn a base copy at the bottom of your deck. Devotion also boosts the spawn copy by one. At the end of your turn, boost the unit to the right by one. So it doesn't have to be Devotion, but obviously Devotion has an additional payoff and Devotion has an additional payoff for some of the other cards in the deck. So I felt like we, it wasn't a bad idea to go that direction because we don't have the control and one or two little control things I don't think is going to change the dynamic of the deck too much. So I figured, let's just go all in with this strat. So what we want to do is get commandos out in the playing field and put this down to the left of the commando so that we can keep spawning commandos in the deck at the end of the turn. And this is honestly playing for like five points a turn. If you think about it, we're getting the commando plus we're boosting it by one, the one that's in deck. So makes a huge difference the defender is in the list for this reason for the reason if we run out of leader charges and we need to protect the roach or we need to protect the raffords that's pretty much it or we want to protect the orders of these when they're vulnerable at four power so you know i would try and put this down if it's going to get answered it's going to get answered but hopefully we could take away one or two copies before it does now we do have things to kind of keep it safe right we can float a marine off the amphibious we can boost it up if we don't have a winch for the Rafford's Vengeance and it's not the right time to do that, you can go and take maybe something like the winch on this just for the boost so that we can keep it going. We have our stratagem so they can't lock it if we want to go ahead and take that in round one, maybe even before we put the defender down because now it demands a heat wave on turn one. There's many different options, right? But uh, you definitely want to run full test in this deck here. Rafford's Vengeance, again, good target for Hensel. It um, helps us cycle the bronzes out, play a bronze unit from your hand, then draw a card, cooldown 5. Whenever you play a unit next to the card, damage a random enemy unit by 2. Mages contribute to the card's crew ability. So we're not going to be playing mages, but we are going to be playing tons of soldiers, right? So, tons of soldiers and sieges, that's basically it. Now, we don't want to be playing commandos off this unless we only have the one in hand. We don't want to draw into commandos, so you got to be careful. So you can manipulate this by clicking the order of the ones that are already on the board before you take this draw ability, right? Because the last thing you want to do is not click your orders of these that are sitting on the board at the beginning of your turn and take this and draw one and then ruin your hand, right? So make sure you're disciplined with that because I did keep that in mind and I was thinking about possible substitutions, but realistically, this is probably the best way to go about it in my opinion if you can just play it right. So that's basically it. We have a Dahlia to go even further with the entire play. So on deploy, spawn a, a base copy of a bronze Northern Realms unit from your hand and give it a shield. So 
we are going to be going for generally one of two targets, okay? If we have commando stripes on the uh, on the roll already on the board, we want to go and we want to take a blue stripe scout if possible, okay? If we don't have any blue stripe scout, we can always just copy one from hand so that we have an additional one in the grave for later with the Adelia. Or if we don't have either of these options accessible, we can go for something like the Carrick Marine just for a big point swing. So that's kind of the idea in mind. You'd probably want to really focus your efforts though on the Blue Stripe Scouts with the Adalia. That's kind of the reason or the main focus and why I put it in the deck. Otherwise, you'd just be better with a duel or something like that, right? You can go for uh, an easy substitute with maybe this or um, something of that sort, right? Selkirk would be fine as well. So I'm not opposed to that as well, but I think that this really helps add security because not all, like not always do we get the King Full Test play. And Blue Stripe Scouts alone without some support, it's not always like ideal. It doesn't really do as much as we want it to do. We want to fill the row and we want to fill the second row. So just getting that done is probably the best way about it. And for that reason, just while we're on the topic, another card you could definitely consider would be Reinforcements. I have nothing against this play. Really, I almost went for it. I almost w took out one of the boilings or something like that, or both of the boilings, and added this and maybe a second winch. That's fine. You could do it that way, sure. Um, and lastly, I was thinking about the siege support quite a bit because this plays well into the, the whole archetype as well, giving zeal because sometimes we might need it. So maybe you go reinforcements, keep the winch the same, take out both of these and put one of these. You know, I've considered it all, but these are just some options for you if you don't like it the way it is right now. Now, talked about Defender, pretty simple. Pavetta, just going to shuffle them all back in the deck so we can play them again, right? John's going to help with the consistency. I'm finding the decks very consistent. I'm finding that sometimes I want to take out John, but sometimes I don't. And I think for the most part, we probably just want to leave it in just so that we're better safe than sorry. John's going to be able to play a Warfare card from our deck. So we're going to be able to grab either the Amphibious, Boiling Wall, Winch, or Reinforcements if you put it in. Makes a lot of sense there, just getting what we need when we need it. The Voimir play is going to be one of our big payoffs here. So on deploy, boost an allied unit and all copies of it by one and give them armor. So this is like a last safe finisher play. You want to make sure that you have them all out there so you're good to go. That's basically it. And uh, boiling, just pretty simple. Five point removal. If we take out an engine or something like that, it, um, it helps. But it doesn't win games. So don't value this as much. But if you're anticipating something in the matchup that you think you're going to have to hold on to this for, then definitely go and do that. Because every turn that we go and we play something like a boiling oil, we're not able to keep pushing and pushing. And that's kind of what we want to do with like summoning all of our stuff onto the board. So I, um, I use my discretion. If I know there's going to be something I need to remove, I keep it. But um, we're not playing like a heavy, heavy control style. So don't keep two in hand is what I'm trying to say more than often. Of course, deck revolves around commandos. If our commandos get answered, we kind of lose, right? We need to have these rolling through play and order summon all copies of this unit from your deck to the row. So again, basically kind of the, the core of our swarm. Winch, just a good boost to keep things alive, but also it reduces the cooldown for cards like Vengeance. I think it's fine to have it in there as a one-off tech for Vengeance, but also just a boost to keep something going. Like I said, uh, one of the commandos, Roach, or the test right so that's basically it we copy bronzes we talked about it we separate the rows make things a bit smoother with the siege ladders we've got the siege towers for the points these get pretty wild out of control because every two turns we're boosting it by two and we have no shortage of ways to get crew that rhymes and uh we got the carrick marine it's really good trade seven for four boost is very helpful and healthy and we have the siege masters which are just really good right now whenever you play a siege engine summon self from your hand to the right and draw a card so we're we're just going right through the deck we've got two four and five siege engines and this is what we came up with here so i do have another idea in mind um that i'm i'm not gonna well i guess we could do it together yeah yeah Let's go through it. Yeah, I called it this is so greedy. We have to actually make it, right? So you could, you could just go and do this. Because some of you guys have been asking me to play Meave, right? You could throw Meave in there and just say, forget about a defender, right? And then you could go and you could do something like that. 
right? Hold up. Five and four, eh? Yeah, so we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. Maybe just keep a boiling, yeah. And four, you could go like, uh... I kind of like this. Siege support. Because I talked about it, right? Um, being able to boost an ally by one keeps her inspired. So it, it's kind of like helpful about that. But then also um, reducing cooldown is helpful in um, this situation. And then the zeal is helpful in just about any situation. Uh, we can also reduce cooldown here, which is helpful. So it's not a bad tech. We could totally grade this out. And again, it's one of those things where maybe defender isn't the way right like there there have been some like situations where it just gets purified anyways so i don't know i'll post both versions of it but i'm going to be playing the games today with the other version this is just going to be an alternative if you guys want to mess around with it but all in all i had fun with this and you know this was a request and i hope that uh, i hope you like the version as much as i do now, let's get into the games. I got about five games for you guys today. We got uh, four wins, and we got clapped really bad in one of the games. But uh, I'll include it all for you. And if you enjoy the content that you see today, don't forget to sub to the channel. I'm really pushing for 6K subs, and uh, obviously you guys can help me out with that. So let's get into the games, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, so for the first matchup, here we have Nilfgaard Double Cross, and I think this game should make at least one person happy. So this would be the first game that we try it out with, and off the bat, I can pull the Raffords with Henselt, and I prefer to do it that way early so that we don't brick the Siege Ladders later, especially because we already have one in hand. I want to focus most of my efforts on getting the Commandos out there, so... We don't want to pay too much mind to putting out uh, the towers, right? And um, red coins, like, really the place we're going to shine here. So let's just get the preliminary stuff out of the way. Obviously, putting defender down is probably one of the slower plays that we have, but I think in this matchup we need to. So when it comes to sequencing here, try and decide if I want to go Henselt or go into the uh, the Roach, but I think we just go with this here. Because there is a possibility that we could have pulled, let's say, the um, Commando from deck, which is kind of nice. It would make it so that we don't have to go and take Roach and take, you know, just a long time to get it done. But um, either way. What's nice about the thinning package, you guys see here, so with the Siege Masters, with the Raffords and everything like that, we're pulling cards, and we're getting more of that stuff we need to make our combo happen. So just funneling out the cards really quick is going to help us out quite a bit. And we get the Death Blow here, of course. This is why I didn't put in really any text for damaging things down, because there's a lot of tokens going around with decks right now. So we can use one leader charge here, and then we could save one leader charge for later, right? And now we're just gonna be smooth sailing. We've got the full test that we can jam maybe beside one of the fours, not the six, just so we don't go as super tall. And then we can just sort of make more copies, right? And then once the row is gonna get filled, we have the siege ladder to fix it up. So it's all kind of working out. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm basically doing this after the fact. Um, I guess I was thinking at the time, well, they already used Yen, so they're probably not going to remove anything else. That's fine. Um, I would normally put it beside one of the fours, though, just so that we're not going all the way up to seven, eight, or nine. You know what I mean? And the crazy part about this whole thing is... We basically are winning uneven, 
We're establishing our carryover for later. We've gotten Yen and we've gotten Muzzle out of the way. And because of those two, I don't think that they can fit Heatwave. So, two big punish situations out of the way in the first round. And um, we're just running away with it here. It's going to be very difficult for them to come back. Just because we have so many cheap plays that we can make, right? So, we don't have to fill the row here. We can basically make another copy, then take a siege ladder, bring one back to the next row, and then fill it, right? I'll be doing more live commentary this coming week, but um, I just felt like hanging out in the Discord server today and uh, playing the games live there, so I wasn't talking over them here. But um, either way. It's going to be a big week coming up. I'm thinking about just really pushing myself. So there will be definitely more live commentary. So what's nice about it here? Okay, I actually messed this up. I think I accidentally put it down here when I had it right the first time. So I lost two points. Um, I'm just telling you guys here that's a mess up. So yeah, um, it is what it is. Fortunately, at this point, we don't really care too much, but we got to be practicing the best behaviors, right? So putting it between the Marine and the Siege Master where we initially had, it's probably the move. And uh, we could just play probably the, the last two cards we have from hand and be fine, right? We know it's a defender. We're still in front here. We've got the winch we could take. Right? We winch that, we get the boost on the Henselt. Slap some commandos down because we can't play Voimir. I'm just probably going to take a boiling oil after the fact. Let me turn down my phone. We're getting text messages and everything. Okay. Sorry, I was checking in the meantime. It required like a, a right away reply kind of thing. So we can just push into round two, basically. Go take the Veta, bring out the combo again, and we have zeal for it, which is pretty wild, right? So in situations like this, control isn't even that important. Let's go play this on the range row. Boost it up, take it out here. It gets the 10 points, but at this point, I don't think it matters all too well, right? We've already done a lot of damage, even if they take care of a 10 point card. The tempo is just crazy. This is like, it's almost worse than Lippy with tempo, right? And um, for those reasons, I think that we just have to play it down. So this is what I was um, intending on doing in round one, right? You give it crew, you bring the other card to the other row to separate things. Then now we have the ability to bring out more commandos if we made too many so that they can't all come out to one row. That's basically the idea. <laughs> Sitting on about 20 point lead here. I want to remove Raffords just because if they have a bronze in hand, we want to get rid of that so they don't get the extra value, right? But chances are it will be golds overall. Just wanted to be certain. Otherwise, you'd take the removal on the Terra Nova because they assimilate. But at this point, it's looking like a 2-0 to me.
There we go. So for the next one here we've got Tactical Decision Nilfgaard. We don't really want to play Commandos from hand. Except it's not all bad if we play one from hand, you know? So there's that. It allows us to save the Amphibious as well if we do it that way. That's kind of nice. So we have the full test there. We have the uh, commando there. So we can pretty much just jam down the combo fast. Defender maybe goes first. It is Nilfgaard after all. So Yeah. In situations like this, we can't deal with them. So... I figure we just start printing these and see where it goes. Really not a lot we can do at this point. So... We could still go and fetch the one that we've lost. And they just go ahead and eat right through the defender as well. That's one of the problems that I'm finding with the defender is that... It's good when it works, it's bad when it doesn't. And you just have to find out, really. I just want to make sure that I have an extra copy, right? Just in case. So that's why I use the leader there. But they're really pulling all the stops here. At least we have something we can go and make a copy with here. Rappers is kind of nice to see. This whole Doom machine, though, plays right into my strategy. So I wanted to play this one out to see how it would go and see if it's a winnable match. But, um,. Still trying to figure it out here. It looks like Mill, kinda, right? With some status stuff going on. I'm thinking that we still have room. I have to click this here to give the impression that we're playing into the round. I don't want to necessarily because they can give it doomed. But either way, there would be more than one target out there, so it doesn't really matter. And um, the round's kind of running away from us, guys. So it might be time to just look for the pass here soon. We're down about 20 points on two cards. We Yeah, there's nothing for Rafford's. Pavetta can't be played. Voimir's kind of sad here. Boiling oil doesn't work. So we have to pass. And they did what they were looking to do, right? They... Slowed, like slowed down our combination pretty hard gave doom to two of the commandos so a lot of the work that we tried to, to put in this round doesn't really mean much and they're milling us down in a matchup where we mill ourselves down so I'm expecting them to go all the way with no cards left and uh, that's tough
I want to tuck back some of the specials because we do need some units to win a game. They pass here or don't play us down all the way. We still have Amphibious Reach. Kind of regretting that, but... Uh, like, putting Amphibious back because now it's maybe a target, but at the end of the day, Amphibious means nothing if there's no units to pull. Um, Roach gone is big pull for them. Like, that's really good. They also managed to get Hensalt, so the RNG in this game is like phenomenal. At least this way we can sort of save some of our stuff after taking Pavetta. Maybe we just use the Siege Ladder and just push that token in the front so they can't keep poisoning our stuff. Imagine if that card was move A unit, crew boosted by two. So like you can move their card, but if you play crew, then you accidentally boost their card. Be kind of nuts. It would be like the ultimate movement tech, but uh, maybe too strong at that point. So I don't think we ever want to go and take Raffords here. We just play it for the points almost, right? I'm thinking that they're probably going to get rid of Amphibious. Which is something I, I kind of regret thinking at this point. Like, I'm thinking that we don't have a lot of points, Adalia's bricked and all that, so maybe we get saved by the round from AA here. However, the issue is um, now we top deck into AA and we might not have anything to use it with. And if we can't mulligan it back, it's sitting there for no points. So I'm just kind of looking at this like, okay, well at least there's a couple units we could pull for now, right? And at least we have enough of a lead where there's something we can do with it. I think Winch is just taken here for points. Based on the setup though, we should be able to get out of the round at least. And um, I was thinking at this point, like obviously we have to take the boiling oil on the, the frigate. However, if we have to play our last card, then there's a possibility that we might want to just go and play Adalia and I think that's what we end up doing because um, Adalia in round three could just play for three points whereas Voimir at least we know we're gonna get a couple blue stripes hopefully right but I don't think they have a card that can provoke an all-in situation here Yeah, so Adalia goes down for points, and then that's basically it. We could save a leader charge for later, fine. And um, as long as we get, like, the two commandos and the siege ladder, we should win the game. I think. But, like, not have them bricked either, right? So just, yeah, put back that one. It's... I was thinking units, but then again, um, going into this matchup, maybe you want to put at least one unit in your deck in case they take a T-Bore, because then it doesn't give us any points as well. So this was a reminder of that, so maybe we would have put back the Siege Tower in this case. 
kept the boiling because then it was one more playable card kind of thing. But uh, luckily, it doesn't really matter all too much. We get the cards played anyways. And uh, I want to put this here so we can set up crew. We should just win two more points off the tower. Five points off the boiling. Six points off the uh, the ladder. And we'll just take it for five points because it's not worth removing a one point engine. So we did all right. We did all right, it's enough to take it. Moving on to like a, a bit of a more serious game here, Off the Books. Syndicate's a pretty good deck right now. If you guys haven't seen, I put out an Off the Books deck maybe about a week ago, and I spent a lot of time practicing different versions and, and really testing them out to see what's working best. and. I'd say I had the most success with this one. Um, well, not this version we're playing, but the one that uh, I made. I don't know, I actually don't remember which one we're playing right now. So I do think that we have a hand that can make them spend. And I want to take advantage of that here. So I'm willing to go even in with the um, the orders here and just get it done. We'll let it float because we have other means of getting it done, right? Like. If they go remove this one here for four, we can take John into Amphibious and do it all that way. I just don't want to use even more leader charges for no reason. Because we want one for Raffords, maybe, right? And uh, we want one for the uh, the Amphibious. Or, sorry, the um, the third round or whatever. The, the final time around with the, the Stripes. And this is just where it gets nuts. Like, look at all the cards we're pulling here. And we're not done yet. Um, that's not a bad play. However, there was also a line where you could just play the Siege Tower quickly. Get that played. Because now we don't have our crew. So I'm just thinking about that. We'll get it back pretty quick, though. If you think about it, like, we get out the commandos on melee row, we put it down, and this is what it is. So, it's not all bad. I think maybe protecting that's probably a safer bet. It plays for a lot of value if left unchecked. And 26 to 9, and they're already spending, like, leader charges as well, and... It's, like, you know, it's not all bad, right? We are trading fairly well. So we do have the crew back here, which is kind of nice. Maybe just boost up a 2 or something, keep it safe. And then, obviously, we want to get into the, the commando printing here. Commando printing and the, uh, the tower. also answer that <laughs> yeah I, I'm not disagreeing with the way I played here I'm just uh, like there's definitely multiple ways to go about it but 
the next turn sort of predetermined. It has to be John, especially now because they're they have it sort of within reach. Like if they go for a, one of the sea jackals and crank it up with all the coins that they have, we can just take John into amphibious and we're right back in the round. So. I don't think that's all too bad here. It's nice to see stuff like that early, like Heatwave, Philippa, all the... All those kind of stop plays that they have. Makes me feel a bit safer about putting this on the board and floating it. And then we have our next two plays lined up. I don't think we can play all the way to nothing. Obviously, Pavetta being played... Round one's not ideal, but it looks like they're running out of steam as well. And when we click these here, it's just tempo I don't think they can keep up with, right? We could do it all again. Our next turn's going to play for eight points, so they might just call it quits before the last card. Well, then there's that. So... Yeah, we're still good, because they're up to 45 on the pass, which is wild. And uh, with them going all in and us not really being able to, I don't know what we can do about that. And they'll probably go ahead and spend everything they've got. So I think that's all right. One of the big things for us was getting the Savola play out of the way, getting that refund back and having that spent. And if we were able to manage that, I think we we're pretty comfortable with the matchup. I don't anticipate them wanting to bleed, but uh, I think we're well prepared for it anyways. And our decks thinned out pretty well. Yeah, they spent a lot in that round and then a lot of what we spent was more set up and we can full test in round three, which is fine, because even after you bring the commandos back, you could still go and do it. So we probably just float. Sometimes you might see me float them or like just toss a marine or something like that, or whatever the bronze card is on a pass. Sometimes I'll I'll toss Pavetta on a pass. I think that you do gamble a little bit more if you play Pavetta on a pass. Obviously, because then you can risk top decking into like two, three commandos. So that was kind of the concern that I had because we had quite a few printed. And uh, obviously, playing hence out was sort of something that I had in mind as well. So this is why I opted, like, I opted to save the Pavetta for round three. Put them all back before they deal with them. Yeah, see, that wasn't too bad, right? Cobb comes out here, Jacques played, they're at 13 points. It's like, we can do that in this play. You see what I mean? Like, now we're up to 32, which is wild. So we really want that short round. That's exactly what we want. So playing down in round one, we have no problem doing. Bleeding in round two, we have no problem doing. Even if we can't get our card back in round two, there's some situations that bleeding is fine. Um, they ended up forfeiting here, but we can look at it here and say it didn't matter because we had more copies that we're going to do and we're going to be able to split up the rows and play them. So it is what it is.
Now, I'm thinking it's another Assimilate matchup, but I was really surprised and wasn't too happy with this game. Again, we play poorly into Mill. It's one of the things that I think is really bad for our deck because obviously we're thinning out so hard. It's also very bad for the game. <laughs> but yeah, in this situation, our deck gets really eaten away by Mill. We have no shortage of points though, so I do believe that we should be able to win on even here. We'll just leave it like that. And I'm thinking as well, even if it is Mill, we can restuff the deck and then bring out all the commandos. So we stop, we have stuff to play. We have tempo. Which is why I'm giving it a try here. Wanted to click it before they go and they mill it so that we have it. That's pretty much the case. Now we don't have another siege in hand, so we might be stuck with that too, right? They did mill Raffords, so we can't pull Raffords with the Henselt. It seems like the second time today we got that card milled. No, it was uh, it was Roach and Henselt earlier. It was Raffords in this one. Okay. But either way, it makes me reluctant to take something like the Henselt and the AA. But I think I think that taking the AA is probably the play here, just because I need to make some copies. And the sooner that we can really push ahead of them, the sooner we could probably pass on them, and then maybe put them in a situation where they never get the card back, right? So I figure that's probably the safest play. Just defend that so they can't go and make a bunch of copies of it. I'm pretty sure that's why, right? They like to give it spying, coup it, use Duchess Informant, you know, and just keep making King Slayers. So I'm looking at the scoreboard here, and you guys look at the 51 points we put up in three turns. Like, that's what I'm talking about. This deck has so much tempo, and look at all the good cards left in our hand still, right? So it's not a bad idea to maybe play for one more turn. Because if they're putting out like four points a turn, and we're sitting about 30 points ahead of them. I don't mind just going for it a little bit here. I take the Adalia because I don't know if we're going to get a better one. And that puts us up almost 40 points. So I'm pretty confident... That mill can't do this with, you know, what they have right here. And also, like, with their leader ability, they're going to pull, what? Five or six point leader. Right? So I think that we have them beat. Not only are we a card up... But we're actually like 30 points up. And I'm thinking that maybe they're going to just play it down regardless because our our deck will be empty, right? And even if they go a few cards down, then 
they might get some of them back. It might be worth it. I'm feeling pretty good about it at this point, though. You think about it, I'm just waiting for them to forfeit. That's basically it. And the fact that they're still not ahead, right? So let's say they pass next round. And we played, yeah, we would just win. We Pavetta those back in the deck, and then we just, um, we just get to rip them all out. Like, it's going to be very difficult for them to keep up with that, being so many cards down, right? And if you guys are like wondering, I had no idea what I was expecting at this point. I was still kind of oblivious to it, but it, it should have been kind of obvious. I just thought that they were going to try and take a round and, and just uh, lose, and that's about it. But then you see the Onero come down and... Them go into a Colgrim, and I think this is complete nonsense. I like, I, I just don't feel like that style of play should be rewarded because it basically punishes any deck that's Devotion. We have no answer to a 12-point unit. They put down a Letho next turn, they're getting the 22 points per turn. And we have a handful of 8 cards that we fought to preserve by playing a round 1 that was, you know, that had a certain strategy, right? So, I just didn't want to play into that anymore. And moving on to the last game of the day, we have the Mahakam Forge. And I'm thinking that this could be the one with Francesca. I've been seeing some of those ones go around, so I'm trying to prepare for it that way. I don't think it's going to be just your classic dwarves this season, at least. So just out with the tempo here, we could sandwich that, get the damage ping. The synergy is quite nice. So they give it resilience and I'm thinking, okay, if we can play well into this round, and get some good carryover, then I don't really know how much it matters. Now, it would be nice to get a tower out there, but I also don't want them to pass on me before I go and make copies of my commandos. So this is why I'm opting to slow it down a little bit because we have enough of a lead and just try and get at least one copy there. And if we need to speed things up a little bit, we can go ahead and put down one of the towers shortly. So that's basically it. It's really tempting to go take a John into a boiling for the miner, but we have to sort of stick to the plan, right? Cool down three for the winch, so we could potentially get two more... Or, sorry, for the Raffords, so we can get two more Raffords in this matchup, possibly. 
and kind of understanding that that's kind of maybe the way we'll go and play the towers just so that we're funneling it out a bit quicker. We want to click that so that we get the temp. Yeah, okay. So we got to stay ahead here. So I think that we've done a good job of getting uh, as many copies as we can. I don't really want to winch here because I kind of want to just wait for that timer. So maybe we just play one of these from hand and then we just go ahead and take that next turn. I wanted to get the two damage. I want some of the tempo. I'm not thinking that they play too far. That's a whoops. <laughs> it happens when you play um, Raffords in a turn. It just feels like you're having two turns at the same time. Um, this isn't crew, but it's still fine. Again, we did what we had to do, and we have the means of just recycling this play here in round two. Obviously, drawing into Pavetta is perfect. I like seeing Siege support. We don't really want to break a Henselt, so I'm tucking that back. And I want to play this before I play Pavetta, just so that we don't pull into one and then we kind of wanted to pull one with the Amphibious, you know what I mean? Just keeps things decent. We have two Boiling Oils. I'm thinking, okay, maybe we take out... This was Ambitious as well. I don't think it was ever the play. I think maybe it was Gabor instead. Because at least we know that would be an engine or something like that. And who are we kidding to try and stop Francesca when it's two procs. And the shoop thing's going around. So they do pull off the shoop. And I think that they're trying to roll for resilience. So I'm really checking these. And so far they missed. And they missed again. That's what I don't like about the RNG, right? You have this idea. So, it's safe to say it's a little bit harder to take this round, but I don't mind. We'll take that before they start playing dwarves, at least get some value from it there. And then, also, we want to kind of preserve the combo because I don't think that we could take them in two at this point. So just thinking about like what we care about the least, I don't really care about Siege Ladder as much here as I care about a Marine in round three. So. Now I want to see more cards. I'm really like looking for the Bruver and all that. So Defender comes down here just because. And I'm even willing to actually go, like earlier, you guys saw me play Pavetta round three. I'm thinking Pavetta round two right now, just because I really want to see something. That's about the best we can do. So we should top deck pretty well. We're going to get Amphibious back. And then we just have to make sure we don't break the other cards that we have. That's all. And we got a perfect pull.
We take the amphibious into a commando, use the commando, put down the full test, take a bunch of copies of those, and then just boost them at the end with Voimir. We're doing pretty well. It's a pretty relaxing deck to play overall, though. I'm just boosting it here, specifically for 5-point removal. I just want to make sure that we can keep it safe enough to get a turn or two out of it, and that's about it. We don't want to go too tall, and I don't want to float it, so I'm just going to take a boost here, that's fine. And we'll just bring that out. And last card, Voimir. I end up playing this card just to show you guys the combination because I want it to be understood what it does, obviously, and they played their last card too, so it's only fair. But uh, there we have it. We'll see you guys tomorrow with another one.